Republican Governor Glenn Youngkin's administration recently made several changes to transgender policies for public schools in Virginia. The updates reverse many of those from his Democrat predecessor. Among the changes, schools are no longer allowed to withhold a student's gender transition from their parents. Students will also be required to use bathrooms and locker rooms in accordance with their biological sex. The proposals now head to a public period of comments. And we go now to Ian Pryor, Executive Director for Fight for Schools and Senior Advisor at America First Legal. Ian, welcome back. Great to see you. Uh, let's talk more about this new guidance coming from the Virginia Department of Education and what it signals. Well, you know, first of all, I think that Glenn Youngkin campaigned last year on restoring parental rights in education. And he has delivered on that time and again in his very short time in office. And I think this this model policy that that replaces the one pushed last year um, is a really big step in that direction. I can tell you from speaking with parents throughout Virginia, they're extremely encouraged. I mean, the most important piece of this, this model policy is that it requires school systems to you know, communicate with parents if their child comes into school and says, you know, I, I want to be a different sex. The, the fact that you have school districts that are um, implementing these policies not only is it unconstitutional, but is extremely dangerous. It could lead to, you know, obviously further mental confusion with children. It could lead to puberty blockers. It could use lead to the use of cross-sex hormones and eventually irreversible surgery. So for the schools to be implementing these things, I mean, quite frankly, it is so dangerous. And we are absolutely encouraged that Governor Youngkin has made this a priority to make sure that school districts aren't doing this. Yeah, and you know, I want to ask you, I mean, personally, what do you think of these changes? I know that you're in Loudoun County, Virginia, which is been in the spotlight over the past few years and really been the epicenter when it comes to parental rights in schools. I think these changes are absolutely necessary. I mean, look, just look at the reaction that you're seeing from the left after this, this model policy was issued. You know, they're talking about now if parents don't affirm what their child is presenting at school, then somehow this is abuse. And that's why they're not telling parents. That's why they're trying to keep parents out of the loop. That should scare everybody, because what that says is abuse no longer means physical abuse. It no longer means mental abuse. A parent could say, listen, you know, if my child is, is presenting with gender dysphoria, I want to work through it. I know that between 80 and 95 percent of um, children that have gender dysphoria will eventually work their way through it. But if a parent says, I want to be part of, of working through that to make sure that, you know, we don't do irreversible damage to my child, they're saying that is abuse. And what does that mean? That means that I guess schools could uh, call Child Protective Services now. That's what's so scary is that these schools are taking away the role of the parent, which is a constitutional right to guide the you know, mental, physical, and emotional well-being of children. So you know, this policy is going to stop that. And it's important that, that it gets implemented. Yeah. And what comes next? I mean, we mentioned this period of public comment, but what happens after that? Well, you know, one of the things that the left has done for, for years, really, while parents weren't paying attention, was litigating these issues. And that's kind of how these, these you know, bathroom policies, these pronoun policies have worked their way into the school system. You know, but ever since 2020, with the pandemic, parents have woken up. So, you know, if the left thinks that they are going to, you know, sue to block these policies, well, they're not going to have an open lane anymore because parents are going to be equally as forthright in exercising their legal rights. So, you know, I fully expect the left is going to engage in litigation, but this time around, parents are going to be ready with their own litigation if school districts do not implement these policies. Just last year, we heard from several school boards that implemented Governor Northam's policies that they had to do so because they were instructed by the law to implement Northam's model policy. Well, this same law applies here to implement Governor Yunkin's model policy. And if these school districts don't do it, it's clearly arbitrary, it's capricious, and they would be in violation of the law. Okay, we're going to leave it right there. Ian, thank you so much. Great to have you on. Thanks for having me.